Here's a question for you. Can you imagine an infinite fence enclosing a finite area? What if I told you this was possible? Kind of mind-boggling, eh? But it's just one of the many things that math allows us to do, which maybe doesn't make sense in real life. This will be a demonstration of what's known as Koch's snowflake. And it's a geometric principle kind of known as a fractal. Uh, let's see if we can figure this thing out, eh? Okay. Here's how we create this thing. First, take an equilateral triangle. Take one of the sides and divide it into three equal pieces, like so. Okay, now create another equilateral triangle out of that middle segment just created, and erase the bottom part. Now that's done to all the other two sides. To continue on with this fractal, that same process, we'll call it from now on an iteration, is done to all the remaining sides. Here is something which demonstrates the principle. No matter how far you zoom in on one part of this, the process keeps continuing. As you can see, the side lengths of the little segments get smaller and smaller but they always remain the same. This process continues on into infinity. Well, what can we see about this? The big question is, can we come up with some formulas to determine what the perimeter and what the area is at each level of iteration of this fractal? Well, I think we can. This page shows the different perimeters at different levels of iteration. Notice how, when before we start, we have an equilateral triangle of side length of s. Since there's three sides, and each with a side length of s, the perimeter is equal to three times s units. As n equals one, we have a side length of s over three, because we divided each side into three segments and made an equilateral triangle with them. We created 12 sides, so the perimeter equals 12 times s over 3. Next, when a equals 2, we have a side length of s over 9, dividing again by 3, and multiplying by the 48 sides, so it's equal to 48s over 9. And lastly, when n equals 3, we have a side length of s over 27, and 192 sides. Thus, our perimeter is 192s over 27. Next, we're going to see if we can find some pattern here in order to create an equation which will tell us the perimeter at any n we give. On this page, along the top, I've listed the shapes when n equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, and the perimeters we found in the last step. First, we'll factor 3 out of n equals 1, 2, and 3. Since there's a factor of 3 in the top and the bottom, we can create those fractions. The first one we'll just make into a new fraction by putting it over a 1, so it looks like the others. Now we gotta see if we can find some pattern here. After a little bit of looking at this, the following pattern comes up. You can see in the top there's increasing powers of 4 beginning at 0, since there's a 1, which is equal to 4 to the 0th, and the n equals 0. Along the bottom, Starting at n equals 1, you can see progressing powers of 3, starting with n. 3 to the 0 equals 1, then 3 to the 1 equals 3, and 3 squared equals 9. The first, 1 over 3, is 3 to the negative 1, and dividing by fraction multiplies by the reciprocal, so that's why there's 3s in the top. So, we come up with the following solution for the perimeter. The perimeter at the nth iteration of Koch's snowflake is equal to 4 to the nth times s, all over 3 to the n minus 1 power. So we found an equation for our perimeter. The question remains, what happens as n gets closer to infinity? This isn't too bad of a limit to do by ourselves, but I took the liberty putting it into TA Interactive, 
having the computer do it for me. And it turns out that it gets closer and closer to infinity. This proves that the perimeter of Koch's snowflake goes to infinity as n increases. What about that area we were talking about? Well, I think I can make a pretty convincing argument that the area of Koch's snowflake is finite. See, if we circumscribe a circle around that original equilateral triangle, we see that the snowflake never goes outside of the bounds set by the circle. Since the circle has a finite area, we can also assume that Koch's snowflake has a finite area. But what exactly is this area? Well, it turns out that if we do some math, we come up with the area equal to 2 times the square root of 3 over 5 times s squared. I'll leave it up to you to confirm that mathematically, but even so. We've just proven that we can have an object that has an infinite perimeter but a finite area. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I hope you had as much fun as I did. Have a great day.